Okay, we're just going to go through, uh, you've got four basic types of joints on your syllabus and in the teacher's guide. If you've watched the other video from uh, on the PowerPoint, you'll see that he also goes into pivot joints and saddle joints. You don't need to know anything about those. So we'll start with the easiest one, which is an immovable joint. So these are joints in the body where there are, so, so a joint is where two bones meet. And an immovable joint, as it says on the tin, uh, doesn't move, allow any movement. So if you look at the uh, cranium, for example, we have three bones and they've got these little wiggly uh, sort of suture lines down them, little fissures, and they're sort of linked together so that you can't move one bit of the skull. They're really just, they're lines of weakness. Now obviously in a, an infant, there's a bit of a gap between there to allow the bones to grow before they fuse together and once they're fused together that's kind of fixed um, part of the, the body that you can't move. So we're going to go to uh, Hansel and Nigel, my skeleton, and look at the other three types of joints which do allow movement. Some of them allow movement in more than one plane, so that means that they can uh, not, not just do this but also be moving around. The three basic types then are the ball and socket joint, which ball and socket we find in the shoulder and your leg bones. So obviously these are our two um, main bits, and um, the two main limbs, and they're attached at the top of the main bone in the pentaductile limb. The bones themselves, we've got a sort of a, a ball shape, at one end that fits into um, an oppositely shaped, complementarily shaped socket. We have, uh, we'll just stick with the limbs I think and do gliding joints, uh, sorry no, hinge joints. So hinge joints again, two sort of equivalent areas of the body. A hinge allows you to move in one plane, so up and down, up and down. Hinge joints in the elbow, and in the knee, you move it up and down. And then finally, our sort of most sort of versatile joints that allow a, a range of movement in a number of different planes are our gliding joints. So your wrist and the little bones in your feet, those bones. Uh, are not hinged, they just sort of move across each other. Now, obviously, this is an articulated skeleton, so I can't show you that, but in the wrist, you can move it like that, you can move it up, you can move it down. Those bones are just gliding across the surface of each other. So, sort of variations on those themes, we've also, um, we've also got gliding joints in between the vertebrae, and they enable you to do this kind of movement, and this kind of movement, and this kind of movement, so all those sort of twisting. But again, those bones are just gliding over that cartilage. Just in case um, they ask you a more sort of curveball-y kind of question, like they want to do, we also have a sort of variation on a hinge joint, which is a pivot joint, and this is uh, particularly the one in your head that allows you to make that kind of movement and um, of course you can't do that but this kind of movement too. So we've got a pivot joint there. We've also got a pivot joint, so it might be hinge joint. This bone here pivots against the humerus so the radius will pivot against the humerus which allows you to do that kind of movement with your radius pivoting against that fixed bone, the humerus. You know, so the humerus doesn't move, you're just pivoting. Whereas a hinge joint, you're doing that. You're actually pulling on one bone or the other. Uh, a variation of a gliding joint is the saddle joint. So your thumb, you will notice, will make a range of movements and you can sort of do that with it. Uh, and of course we humans have an opposable thumb, that's our great feature. And that is a saddle joint, which is a slight variant on a gliding joint. 
So, just to recap then, so we've got fixed joints, the joints that don't move, hold the different bones of your cranium together. Next most important joints, ball and socket joints, full range of movement, movement in more than one plane, ball and a cup shaped socket. We've got gliding joints, the ones in your wrists, little bones where they're just gliding across each other, and then we've got our hinge joints. Now the examples on the syllabus are, tend to be the shoulder and the elbow for the ball and socket and hinge, gliding in the wrist and uh, your fixed ones in the skull. Don't forget that you need to be able to apply it to any of the joints in the body. And the great thing about your joints is that you get to take them into the exam with you. Good luck.